Hello, it's Doris, and I thought I would get on and talk about my Diversifon TBR today. I wasn't planning on making a Diversifon TBR video, but I changed my mind because <laughs> I was watching some of the Diversifon TBR videos that have come out and the ones by the host. Uh, explaining Diversathon this round and there aren't any challenges with Diversathon but they are requesting that we try to focus on own voices so I thought it would be interesting to go through this stack of books on camera and see which ones best fit the own voices criteria and that'll be an easy way for me to narrow down this stack into a manageable amount for a week's reading because I have seven books here. Well, six really, because one doesn't count because I've already read it, but I just want to talk about it. But I have six books here and I don't think, and they're hefty books. They're not like young adult or small. They're full sized volumes that I can't handle in a week, all six of them. So. I'm going to go through them and I've done a little bit of research and figured out which ones will best fit the bill. So first up I have Amy Tan Saving Fish from Drowning and I had gone ahead and bought myself this with my December Christmas haul because one of my goals this year is to finish off all the Amy Tan books and I'm only lacking the two so I grabbed this one. And I think this is a possibility. Amy Tan is an Asian American writer from San Francisco. And this story is about an Asian American art patron also from San Francisco who arranges a trip on the Burman Road for 11 other, I guess, art patrons or tourists interested in that um, trip. And yeah. So, I think this is a maybe, but not an exactly, so we'll see how it goes. The next one I had in my stack, these next four, no, three, no, four, I can't count. <laughs> these next four are ones that I picked up at the used bookstore, and I used Diversathon as a criteria to narrow down my basket selection that day. So these are ones I thought I might read during Diversathon. But I have Ann Patchett's State of Wonder, and I really want to love Ann Patchett. I've never read any of her novels, but I'm very much intrigued by her cover art and titles and storylines. So I really have my fingers crossed that I'm going to love her because I want to buy more of her books. I'm so shallow. But anyway, this one is set in the Amazon and it's some pharmaceutical research and some mysterious surroundings, people going missing. But unfortunately, I don't think Anne Patchett meshes own voices wise with the characters in the story. So this one's not going to make the list this week. So I'm going to have to bump it to February or March TBRs. Sad, sad, sad. I want to love Ann Patchett. <laughs> the next one is Island Beneath the Sea by Isabel Allende. And Isabel Allende is a South American author. And this novel is set in Haiti, at least for part of it. Um, but... So it's a so-so match for own voices, so-so, but not a, exactly, not a perfect match. So I'm going to put this in the maybe pile. Next up, we have The Roundhouse by Louise Erdrich. Erdrich. I'm not sure how to say her name. And this one is a contemporary Native American story. There's a bit of intrigue. Um, I believe a woman is attacked on a reservation and yeah. So I, I was not sure that this one would meet the own voices criteria, but I did 
Google the author and she's actually a member of the Chippewa tribe. So, hooray, this one is a definite. And then Khaled Hosseini, I hope most of you know that this one's a definite. If you do not, if you've never read Khaled Hosseini, I think you need to read one of his books at some point in your life. They're very deep and impactful and just profound and they give you a whole new understanding of what's going on in Afghanistan and that just the Middle East definitely I've read his first two um, Kite Runner and A Thousand Splendid Sons and just fabulous he's a fabulous author so yeah this one's a definite Afghan author and Afghan story so definitely yes to that one this one's a definite too homecoming by Yaja Jesse this was the diversathon group read in the last round so I know this one's a given I was wanting this book and I've been anxious to read it so I'm excited that now's the time tomorrow diversathon starts tomorrow I'm not sure of the exact hour. I need to research that, but it starts tomorrow and runs through next Sunday. So that's a definite. And then the other one is Colson Whitehead, The Underground Railroad. This is the group read for this round of Diversathon, but I've already read it. And I would highly recommend it. If you haven't read this, go ahead. I'm really excited to read the comments and discussion about this book this week. It's just... It's a very impactful book. I love that he didn't sugarcoat the plantation situation, for lack of a better word, during slavery in the U.S. Because it's good to see a different perspective on that. And I know there was a book on my last wrap-up video that I totally trashed because it was just so hopeless and so many bad things happened to the one family and the one girl in that story. And probably almost as many bad things happen to the main character in this one, but the difference is the hope and the triumph of the human spirit in this story. I just, when I read it, I was trying to think why it was such a good book. And I, my thoughts kept spinning and it, and it kind of hit me that this reminded me a lot of The Grapes of Wrath. When I read the ending of The Grapes of Wrath, the very end, and the very end of this, you just really see that triumph of the human spirit, the perseverance, and the, the, the always there are people that reach out and give each other a hand up with the little bit that they have. It's just, that that is just a beautiful story that I love reading in literature. And this one has it in a similar way as The Grapes of Wrath. So, yes. But this goes in my no pile because I've already read it. So, that leaves me with the perfect amount. Let's get a pretty picture. <laughs> this is a perfect amount, I think, for a week's reading because sometimes I can read six books in a week if there's a lot of young adult and short books mixed in but these are all pretty significant novels and I think I'll be doing well to finish these in a week and even then I'm not sure if I'm going to finish all three and I have some other little bits of books that I'm working on that you know will get into the mix but that's my TBR for Diversathon and also I found out that 24 and 48 started today, and that is when you read 24 hours out of a 48 hour time period, and that's an interesting concept to me. It's quite a lot of reading, um, and I don't know how successful that I'll be with that, but I'm keeping track because I think it's fun to keep track, and so far I've got 17 minutes in, and it's 1 o'clock, <laughs> so, hmm, but I'll let you know how that goes. But thanks for watching, and I'm excited to hear about all your Diversathon thoughts this week. And I'll chat with you soon. Bye.